Today, we're going to discuss the U.S. lethal laser weapons in development. Since the invention of aircrafts, the U.S. Air Force and Air Force of various other nations have been working to maintain air superiority, and Air Force tactical aircraft have been trying to shoot down other aircraft since then. Therefore, there's always a need to increase the survivability of airframes. In this pursuit, the Air Force has attempted to enhance the defensive systems that aircrafts already have with lethal lasers. Stay till the end of the video as we explore the developments that have been made and the various tests that have been carried out. The U.S. Navy had previously worked on arming their battleships with lasers through the ANSEQ-3 laser weapon system, also called XN-1 laws. In 2014, the weapon was mounted to the USS Ponce for field testing. The U.S. Navy announced in December 2014 that the LAWS system exceeded all expectations and performed well against low-end asymmetric threats, and that the commander of the Ponce had given permission to utilize the system as a defensive weapon. The LAWS, LAWS, is a ship defense system that has so far publicly engaged a simulated small boat assault and an unmanned aerial vehicle or drone. LAWS employs an infrared beam from a solid-state laser array that can be set to either a high output to destroy a target or a low output to alert or disable a target's sensors. The minimal cost per shot is one of its advantages versus projectile weapons. The cost of generating the intense pulse is negligible for each weapon firing, but ordnance for projectile weapons must be designed, manufactured, handled, transported, and maintained, and that takes up storage space. The LAWS was created to counter low-end asymmetric threats. Its scalable power levels allow it to be employed at low power to non-lethally dazzle a person's eye, and at high power, up to 30,000 watts, 30 kilowatts, to fry sensors, burn out motors, and detonate explosive materials. LAWS can shoot down a tiny UAV in as little as two seconds by lasing a key spot. When confronted with small boats, the laser may disable the craft's motor, then repeat the process against other boats in fast succession, requiring only a few seconds of shooting time per boat. Although the LAWS is accurate enough to target explosive rockets on board, whose detonations may kill the operators, attacking a platform is more effective than targeting individual crew members. LAWS can burn through some crucial components in bigger aircraft, such as a helicopter, causing it to crash. The LAWS was declared an operational asset in September 2014, allowing ship commanders to utilize it for self-defense. Under the terms of the Convention of Certain Conventional Weapons, humans are not a target of the weapon, but UAVs, helicopters, and swift patrol boats are. The Navy has released videos that shows the LAWS damaging a Scan Eagle UAV detonating a rocket-propelled grenade and burning out the motor of a rigid-hull inflatable boat while on deployment. Officials claim that it is performing above expectations. One laser shot cost only 59 cents, compared to hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars for a missile. It is powered and cooled by a skid through a diesel generator, separate from the ship's electrical systems, resulting in a 35% increase in efficiency compared to the power given. Its powerful optics, which are mounted on the Ponce's superstructure above the bridge, can detect objects at undisclosed but tactically relevant ranges, and sailors have compared its surveillance capabilities to having the Hubble Space Telescope at sea. Sailors use it on a regular basis for aiming and training, whether to disable or destroy test targets, or to identify possible targets. Anyone with expertise playing common video games may operate the weapon which is controlled via a flat-screen monitor and a gaming system like controller, integrated into the ship's combat system. It has performed admirably in inclement weather and can work in high humidity and after a dust storm. However, the system isn't intended to work in sandstorms and hasn't been tried in those settings because it didn't make much sense, but threats aren't supposed to work in those conditions either. Deployments on other ships are being investigated, and despite the facts that the LAWS was only supposed to be on board for a year, it worked so effectively that fleet leadership chose to keep it on board the Ponce for as long as it was at sea. Later this year, the U.S. Navy will be sending laser weapons to war. The Navy is about to unveil a game-changing armament system that will allow warships to destroy enemy drones, helicopters, fixed-wing assets, and even other ships or fast attack boats. For numerous years, Lockheed Martin and the Navy 
have been developing a high-energy laser with integrated optical dazzler and surveillance Helios, a 60-kilowatt ship-integrated laser weapon. The weapons will soon be transported to San Diego, California to arm a Navy destroyer called the USS Preble, according to Lockheed developers at the Surface Navy Association Symposium. Although ships have been armed with laser weapons like LAWs for years, the Helios is more powerful, has greater range, is scalable, and is more devastating than prior lasers. Arming lasers with Helios is a significant step forward in the Navy's maritime warfare capabilities for a variety of reasons. Lasers are scalable, which means that the level of power can be altered to suit a specific threat. For example, disabling, stopping, or entirely killing a target is needed because the Navy and its business partners have developed creative techniques to store and use expeditionary power on board. This powerful laser has now been effectively integrated on destroyers. Laser weapons may be power scale to impact targets at very long ranges with devastating and even unparalleled weapons effects with the correct amount of power and energy. In reality, the Missile Defense Agency is now focusing on employing lasers for missile defense, which means that lasers might be fired to the top of, or perhaps beyond, the Earth's atmosphere. In terms of customizing effects, an interceptor weapon like the SM-3 or SM-6 may not be as scalable, which means they will employ explosive energetics and fragmentation to eliminate a threat object. A laser, on the other hand, might be used to destroy or incinerate an enemy asset or approaching missile without causing a big and potentially indiscriminate explosion. This option may be particularly beneficial in situations where a threat is approaching a populated location or heavily frequented ocean area and ship defenders want to avoid harming civilians. Before we discuss Self-Protect High Energy Laser Demonstrator, SHIELD, on aircrafts, be sure to subscribe for more contents like this. A Self-Protect High Energy Laser Demonstrator, SHIELD, is a program for developing directed energy weapons. This program's goal is to demonstrate the capabilities of a laser system installed aboard an aircraft. A moderate power laser will be developed and integrated into a fighter-compatible pod as part of the initiative. On February 24, 2021, Jeff Hegemeyer, AFRL Program Manager, told Breaking D in an email that the first full-up flight test of the Self-Protect High Energy Laser Demonstrator, SHIELD, is now slated for 2024. However, some groundbreaking testing were set to take place between last year and 2024. Todd Harrison, head of the Aerospace Security Project at the Center for Strategic and International Studies, CSIS, stated that he would not oversell the capabilities of the SHIELD project. He stated that it will not work against every threat. He also said that there were many technological hurdles that needed to be overcome and that there are countermeasures adversaries can employ to make high-energy laser less effective. It is a technical challenge to integrate a high-power laser weapon with an aircraft for this type of mission. And SHIELD will be the first Air Force demonstration to prove that the U.S. Air Force have been able to address those challenges. SHIELD is based on a tens of kilowatts electric solid-state laser, but the weapon's specific power level and range are classified. Solid-state lasers could be much smaller and lighter than chemical lasers, such as the one developed for the ill-fated airborne laser, ABL program, for shooting down ballistic missiles in the boost phase. The ABL was too heavy for its platform, a modified Boeing 747, to handle, and it was shot down in a 2011 after the Department of Defense spent $16 billion on it. It was also a massive and ponderous target. The shield pod, on the other hand, is consistent with the weight of regular F-15 pods, according to Hegemeyer's email. The basic design, size, shape, and weight was based on the 610-gallon fuel tank that is common on various Air Force aircraft. Tell us what you think about these new laser developments in the comments section. Be sure to watch our video on Russian Carpet Bombers TU-22 Massive Action.